I know. Torrents have not been on a good trend lately, and we use them less and less. But using a Raspberry Pi as a torrent box is a nice project, that can run on top of anything else, even on older models. Once set up, you can have a nice web interface where you just paste the links or torrent files, and let the Pi do everything for you. I'll show you how to get the same result, plus additional tips to get the most of it. I tested a bunch of apps to build my torrent box, and this is the one I prefer. A nice web interface that you can use from your computer or smartphone, and many advanced options to do anything you want, notifications, scripting, dynamic DNS, speed limits, etc. It's available directly in the Raspberry Pi OS repository and can be installed and configured in a few minutes. So, the name of the app is QubitTorrent. And it seems like it's your favorite too, so we are on the same wavelength here. You'll find the app in the default repository. You can use the add and remove software app on desktop, or directly the apt command line. A desktop environment is not required. The Knox package is required to download torrents via the command line, or to start the app on boot. So, it's probably a good idea to install it too if you want to use the advanced features. Once installed, you'll find QubitTorrent under the Internet category in the main menu. You can absolutely use the interface directly if you like. Find a torrent, like the downloads from Kali Linux. Then use the plus symbol to add the link and start your download. But the goal of this video is to go a bit further. We'll enable the web interface, and only use it after that. The role of the Raspberry Pi will only be to run the torrent client and give us access to the interface from another computer. To enable the web interface, go to Tools, Preferences and Web UI. Check the first box and set the login and password. Quickly check the other options if you like, but you don't need anything else to get started. Once done, go to your computer and type the Raspberry Pi IP address, followed by the port in your web browser, it's 8080 by default you should get a login page. Type the user and password you just set, and you'll get a similar interface, directly in your web browser. If you have a server distribution or want to use the command line, the setup is a bit different. You'll need to use the Knox command, with a bunch of options, or even create a configuration file. If you are in this case, I recommend checking the article link in the description, where I explain all the steps for both versions. QBitTorrent supports the use of plugins. In the top right corner, there is a search tab, that you can use to find a torrent quickly. Be careful, not all of them are legit, but you can for example install the Linux tracker, to get access to many Linux distributions images, directly via the interface. Just install the plugin by copying and pasting the link from the GitHub page, and then use the search engine to find the file you are looking for. You need to know the exact version you want, as you'll get a lot of old ones, but it's a nice feature anyway. You can also use the web interface to adjust the settings. You'll find here all the basic options that a downloading app need, but also some nice features, that the alternatives don't necessarily have. For example, you can enable mail notifications to get notified for each download completion. You can run custom scripts too. Maybe to move downloaded files, or to create a push notification to your smartphone, as explained in my Python book. You can disable the authentication for specific clients. For example, if your computer or smartphone have a static IP address, you can choose to remove the login form for them. And another nice feature, is that you can use this form to update your dynamic DNS configuration. This will be particularly useful if you open your torrent box on the internet and don't have a static IP address. In short, QBitTorrent is the most complete torrent client. Any option you might need is available there. Or maybe not. There is one that seemed pretty essential that I didn't find in the settings. If you use only the web interface, the main issue is that QBitTorrent needs to be running on the Raspberry Pi, to give you access to it. 
and even when you enable the web UI, it doesn't start automatically on boot. On Windows, there is an option, but I didn't find an easy way to do this on Raspberry Pi. In the wiki, they explain how to create a service for this, but it seems a bit complicated for something so essential. I would have loved a checkbox in the settings, or even another package to use QBitTorrent as a service. Anyway, the easiest way I found to make this work, is to add the Nox command in my cron tab. I configured it to run the command on boot. Once done, QBitTorrent will start automatically on boot, and you can access the web interface directly. Even if you don't use Torrent so often, installing this app on top of any project is a good idea. It's pretty handy to have this web interface available when you need it. It's also a good fit if you use your Pi as a file server. As explained in a recent video, using Samba or Open Media Vault is a great project for a Raspberry Pi, and you can easily redirect your torrent downloads to a shared folder. This way, you can access the files directly from your computer or connect the folder to Kodi, to directly watch your download files on your TV from another Raspberry Pi. The possibilities are endless. This app is very light, so it's also a nice addition to a Raspberry Pi Zero running all the time. Check these other videos on my channel for more details on how to set this up.